Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, The Lost Students of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Book Lover, and right now, it is October 20th, 1962, and we've just finished beginning the redistribution in Bratsk. Very cool. So, we can repair the Trans-Siberian Railway, we got a few comments to go through, and agricultural development begins to improve? Sure, why not? Our communes are growing larger by the day. The nutritional and economic security that our communes provide for the everyday family has had a pronounced effect on birth rates. With this in mind, it is becoming ever more pertinent that we boost agricultural output. Consequentially, mechanized farming equipment should be produced and distributed to the communes so that they may increase production. Not only will this help our farmers produce more, but it also free time for our workers to do other tasks. Which is probably a good idea. So right now, we're already beginning to build more schools. That's the cons currently supports our decision to empower the communes so we get more stability. Uh, political power and uh, popularity is libertarian socialism. Uh, I will say, do want to say this though. Um, there's support for both sides. For me to go with the army or go with the mother anarchy route. Uh, apparently a lot of people have already done the mother anarchy route. So to the disappointment of some people. Because I'm going to disappoint people regardless. <clears throat> I just want to go with the libertarian socialist route. The anarchy route for this campaign. But if there's enough support. I don't mind going and trying out the army path relatively soon after this campaign there'll be at least one campaign after this before i come back to the siberian black army but if you really want to see me do the army route let me know in the comments below because i'll put it down on my personal list in which i will make sure that we do play it eventually so i just want to leave that out there because there's there's a lot of support for both sides but overall at the time of this recording there's more support for us to go the mother anarchy route but in the fields please you need to listen to me you need to leave me alone lady Kletchikov inserted the key into its slot and turned it. Behind him was a dark-haired woman, a single freckle on her nose. Kilchikov remembered her physical attributes as well. There wasn't much else to observe on the woman. She wore rags for warmth and walked barefoot when there wasn't snow, which w there never was. My son is still out there. You can find him. Companion Galanskov told me you could find him. He believes he's out there. Why don't you? The woman pleaded with him as Kilchikov began to walk down the street. Uh, Kilchikov Took a cigarette from his pocket and lit it. I am just the middle man, lady. I don't remember every name that comes across my desk. She'd been hounding him for months. Apparently, Kilchichikov had been putting out a request for additional volunteers to a commune facing raids from up north, and her son was the first to go. He shook his head and he, as he walked. These people need made him miss the days in the Union where he oversaw the Siberian plan in peace. The woman hastened her pace and stopped in front of him. She gripped onto Kilchichikov's shoulders and he moved to shrug her off but stopped. He was face to face with her. He could see the tears form in her eyes. He watched as they rolled down her cheeks and disappeared under the ground below. Kilchichikov scrunched up his face in frustration. Move up. Gosh darn it. But he didn't. He was frozen. Please, she pleaded. If you can't find him, don't make anyone else go through this. You can find some alternative. I know you can. My son believes so much in this movement. In you and I. He may have laid down his life for this. He didn't have to die to some dude from Tomsk. Kilchichikov went through a range of emotions. From anger to empathy. He wished this woman was number so he could understand her. Was number. Huh. I'm sorry, but we need men in the Black Army to move now. I'll put more calls out for factory workers instead. Happy? Efficiency gain? Eh. Where are we at with the Siberian plan for this one? Like I see the Siberian plan. Because we can use that manpower. Efficiency gain right now is looking, well, like nothing. Move. Let's see. Rural production. Mill factory industrial capacity. Actually, we could use more stuff like that too. So, uh, return of the mines. With normal economic functions restored and a good deal of steam is having been added in the form of public reconstruction projects, the economy has begun to grow at a rapid pace. Demands for mineral resources have increased nearly tenfold, and many of the communes are ill equipped to provide. With a third of German bombers destroying any large scale mining operation gone, this seems like a good time to reopen the mines that were previously closed. Additionally, we should begin manufacturing and distributing new mining equipment to the available communes with the mine states readily available. Cool. Oh, look at that. Hunter political power. Nice. So we got the commune stuff done. So I do apologize for people who wanted me to do the army route. So we'll get there eventually. We will. I promise. Let's see. 30 more days for that. We can't do anything there. So we can do this stuff. We All that manpower is gone immediately. I don't want to make two divisions. But even then, like our divisions that we have currently, we need more manpower. Hmm. Anyways, let's see. Extraction. Not really worth it. Streamline focal production facilities. Efficiency gain goes down. Industrial capacity, though, goes up. And we have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm. Consumer goods, construction speed. Yeah. That stuff is pretty good to do. Uh, consumer goods by 7.5%. Decreased factories, industrial capacity. Uh, I'll do this one. Industrial capacity or capacity gain. Uh, I'll do this one instead. And maybe we'll screw it and just do 
Oh, two, why not? Nice. Minus 17%, 0.12 construction speed, 0 0.07 cap, 0 0.1 output. Not bad. Not bad. After we return to the mines, we got the readout systems. And we shall choose Army Reserve Training. With rural production nodes. The art of anarchist society lies not in the cities or suburbs, but the countryside's rural towns and local communities therein. Helping these communities to end their reliance on cities for manufactured goods is an important goal for us. Therefore, we shall encourage the development of local workshops so that the communes might produce manufactured goods for themselves. Additionally, these workshops will allow the communes to arm themselves more easily with the production of Kalashnikovs being right in their backyard. Very nice. Taking control of ourselves. With the free territory and trusting, and trusting increasing power into the communes, the Black Army is taking a backseat to the leadership of the Siberian people. Much to the chagrin of prospecting, power-hungry generals, the people have decided to stay true to the ideals of anarchism that inspired the revolution in the first place. Oh, we actually get hurt from that, huh? Or we can prepare raids. I love raids. Well, against enemies. There we go. Good luck. Try it out. After this one, we shall go ahead and try that one. I would love to do this one, but... Repair the Trans-Siberian Railway. Across the few successes of the old Tsarist regime was the creation of the Trans-Siberian Railroad. The railroad had an inordinate impact on Russia, binding the nation in a way never before seen. Used extensively during the Bolkharin regime, after World War II became a vital artery of the Soviet Union and the Soviet-German War in the 1950s. After we lost the war, German bombers pummeled the rail line into near oblivion. However, with German bombers now far away from Russian skies, we can repair the portion of the railway that runs within our borders and maybe, maybe, bring back some of its former luster. Nice. And these guys are already getting raided. They nice. They paid the man. That sucks. They're getting raided on two sides, and then we just did, did them like that. Oh, I love that. Oh, we need to do some more stuff here too. Nice. Emergency conscriptions. Well, at this point, we might just be able to take one of these. Yeah, how much did you get the twelve hundred one? Just because we have so much libertarian social support already. But we'll see. We'll get our sides with Italy, the Mongolian Civil War. After this, continue the regional interconnection. Further in the development of our infrastructure is always a goal to strive towards. Not only does it improve the flow of resources throughout the country, but also brings the communes closer together, both economically and politically. These bonds between them shall be tested as we expand and reach the Siberian Soviet. So anything we can do to strengthen them will be vital. To that end, we will be investing in the creation of a road system that will travel all across the Siberian Soviet and connect us with even the most isolated communes. So, uh, you guys, some of you guys left a comment in the last video saying that if we want to go with the Mother Anarchy routes, we need to go with, or do not let Stepanov take control. What are you doing, Stepanov? Bombed out railroads. Yevgenia Taratuta was an, was an author. When she was not writing, however, she found joy in taking the majestic Russian countryside, or taking it in. She didn't remember much from the Ukraine. It was flashy, remember, not like the hills of Siberia. It reminded her a bit of the time she'd spent in France, her father, a Ukrainian anarchist that fled the killings there. Nature gave her inspiration, it gave her purpose, but it became increasingly difficult to view the far reaches of Russia, with the rail system being in such disrepair. I want to fix a rail, Startuta said. I want to fix many things. I want to heal this fragmented society and country. I want to bring freedom to every oppressed person, but I fear that we will be forced to march on foot to every village in Russia to liberate them. Unless we have functioning rails, Startuta said. Tara Tuta pause, filing into a typical oration flow before getting to her main point. We must make it a pounder mount duty of the General Assembly to repair the Trans Siberian Railroad to its former glory. Good idea. Terrible justification. Androni Mishrenko spat. You weren't at Sevastopol. The Germans had artillery the size of mountains carried on rails. I would support this motion if mimicking the superior weaponry was the main goal. Stepanov rolled his eyes. The proposal is fine, Yevgenia. I think restoring the rail would have added many benefits, such as potential pro profitability. Rope to hang themselves and all, right? Behind him, Kilchikov nodded in agreement, dollar signs practically illuminating his eyeballs. Yuri swayed his head from side to side in contemplation. I don't know, Captain Tartuta, our companion. Don't you agree that there exists a troubled past in association with the Trans Siberian? Would it not be better to uproot the section of rail that exists within our borders? or boundaries, and start fresh. Additionally, this will prevent status elements from abusing the rail system for their own use here. Tartuta offered a soft reply to Yuri. She admired his idealism. It was what had made him a perfect figure for the anarchist movement. I see your approach, com uh, companion Galonskov. I leave the decision up to this body. It's here to stay. A new revolution means new rails. Hmm. Which one do we want? We get infrastructure regardless. Increases consumer goods sales. I don't like that. A new revolution. Hmm. I'm going to go with that one just because we can. Because I want the pee pee. The validation laid. An experiment in anarchism that many thousand none was not possible. We have proven time and time again that our iris is a superior ideology. Without compromising our morals, we've managed to create an economic system that benefits all, and not just a privileged few who happen to control the means of production. We've completed laying the economic foundation of a nation of and for all Russian people. 
Um, I mean, that one's really good. This one's just too good to get. Like, mmm. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do that one more time. Just because I think it's incredibly good. So good. Tasty. Because that political power and stability is just... I can't... You can't beat this. You just can't beat this. And then after that, I will do emergency conscription to get... Uh, well... Well, maybe not. I mean, maybe I'll do that one. Convince? Uh, and one opposing it. Empower the communes? Oh. Oh, that's going to hurt us regardless. Oh, whoops. Well, we'll see what happens. Political autonomy in the free territory. All communes are equally represented. However, the matter of autonomy on a political level is another matter. Some communes possessing more resources than larger populations feel that they are unfairly constrained by others and are deserving of more freedom. In the true spirit of anarchist fairness, they claim. One such commune has approached us to ask for the increased freedoms which they feel to they deserve. In return, they are willing to encourage the people to support the current motion. It's only fair. That's fine. Uh, I didn't realize... Oh, yeah, there we go. They, okay, so... It, it said it was going to fail because Kant was opposing it. That's interesting. I kind of like that. That's kind of a good thing to put in there. So now we'll get more political power, stability, libertarian stuff. And uh, yeah, then we'll... Ooh, that hurts our stability and war support, though. Ooh, that's only 450, though. Is that really worth it? Probably not. Foundation laid. Nice. Anything else? Oh, more equipment. Yes, yes, yes. A thousand times yes. Research facilities, even though they're not... Oh, look at that. Authoritarian democracy. Interesting. Let's see, if, even though that's not going up at all, um, let's, let's not, not, not look too bad. Simrugak. Oh, God, I don't even re remember how to pronounce it. I remember I pronounced it correctly, I think, once. And other than that, I can't remember how else I pronounced it. Oh, boy. Mm. Hmm. Cool. Let's read the next focus then. Delegate Industrial Administration, the Industrial Security Council, Roads for Grain, Incentivize Industrial Expertise, Industrial Expertise. Army professionals of industrial expertise, industrial expertise. Are you chain of command? Well, undo the Black Army. The Black Army stands as the guardians of the revolution and freedom here, and will be instrumental in liberating Siberia from the grasp of tyrants and dictators. The Siberian War took a heavy toll on our armed forces, and in many ways we are still reeling from the effects of that war on our military. Even in terms of just equipment and manpower, two areas in which we have normally done well compared to our neighbors, we have a significant way to, or way to recover. We should take stock of the Army's current situation and take note of areas we can improve in. The economist troubled thoughts. Kill Chichikov thought... Fought with a steak, ripping at its chewy, undercooked meat. The bread rolls fared a bit better, nearly dislodging one of his teeth with the stiffness of the roll. The vegetables may have been worse. They had been cooked to perfection, but his wife's vegetable choice was, of course, onions. He was deathly allergic to onions. Yekaterina looked to him with a look of disappointment. You barely touched your food, Mikhail. Well, it certainly touched me, and beaten me, and nearly taken my life and teeth. Gilchichikov remarked, leaning back in his chair in defeat. Oh, uh... My apologies, my cat wanted to leave the room. Yekaterina, Yekaterina set her fork down, dabbled, dabbed at her lip with a napkin. I thought it was delicious. The room was silent. It was time for a different line of questioning. How was your day today? It was easy to get her husband to talk about himself. If all, if all, else, uh, if all else fails, she could always rely on that. Kilchichikov stared off into space for some time despite the simple question. His wife simply sat and observed him. You were right. You, you were there, right? You met Puharin when he came to Noble Sibirsk, right? Kilchichikov already knew the answer to that. A photograph of the three of them sitting in a foyer. Of course, his wife laughed. I don't know how you could have missed the man. He was larger than life. Mikhail nodded for a bit, letting his partner's words echo. Do you remember the things they said about him, even then? Yekaterina was struck by the same silence that had taken her husband. Um, I suppose I do. They never really had a pleasant opinion of him, did they? They didn't really have a opinion, good opinion of him here, did they? Mikhail's hand suddenly shot out and grabbed his wife, prompting a gasp from her. He stared deep into her eyes. What will they say about me, Kat? When I am dead and my economic policies have run their course, will they curse my name as we do his? The rest of the dinner was, of course, very silent. Oh, yeah, no, I don't think I want to raid against these guys. That's a bit too much for us to raid against. Those big boys up there? No, no, no. I liked beating up the small boys. No, no, let's not, let's not go there either. Um... Hmm. Okay, anyways, another focus, shall we? Review the chain of command and delegate industrial administration. At its core, communism is an ideology whose whole purpose is to give the means of production back to the people. Giving a centralized government control of the economy is completely contradictory to this idea. In order to prove the efficiency of our economy, we should instead create an industrial council from several communes, which will create a list of possible industrial improvements and sites of investment, which will then be passed on to each commune's local council for consideration. The industrial council will then be also also be allocated a set amount of capital so that they might facilitate such industrial construction projects in underprivileged communes. Nothing without us? Not bad, not bad. Ah, uh, Krasnoyarsk, it's time again. 
And we're, we've still got about a little more than a week. Uh, this stuff wouldn't be bad. I like instruction speed. How are we doing right now? Seven? Not bad. But nothing without us. Do you smoke? I don't think I've ever asked. Stepanov let the cigarette dangling out of his mouth, took a few puffs, and shoved his hands back into his pockets. The old General Mushurenko Mush kept his vision forward as the pair walked down the street towards the General Assembly. Not anymore, he grunted out. My last smoke was in Moscow before I boarded the train to the city. My next one will be when I take the train from here back to my nation to Moscow. Stepanov blew the smoke into the air. You talk a lot about Germany, about Moscow. We're still here fighting for the anarchist movement in our own sliver of Russia. Why don't you ever talk about that? Mishurenko kept his pace. Now turning to face Ivan. Are you accusing me of something, companion Stepanov? Ivan shrugged, running a hand through what little remained of his hair. Some would call it an accusation, so I would be more inclined to call it hope. Hope? Hope that you see beyond all this talk of anarchy and of freedom. Stepanov stopped in his tracks, making the general do the same. Hope that you would support me unconditionally. Mishurenko's face scrunched together in confusion, but quickly softened in re realization. Mishurenko was a hero to the people, but not to the Black Army. He was a legend, an ideal, a man. Or to the Black Army, he was a legend, an ideal, a man who had never stopped fighting. Never being one for politics, he could still sense when he was being used as a pawn. Was he ready for that? Mishurenko quickly turned away from Ivan and resumed walking. Never tell anyone about this conversation. Never, 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 never. Actually, what is the construction speed right now? Because I would love to go speed, 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 speed. 0.12. I like 0.12 where we're at for... Or point, minus 17% for consumer goods already. Hmm. Wow, look at all that pee-pee. All right, scavenge for loot, shall we? We implemented the motion, so we can't do too much else. Uh, ooh, the city crest is nice. It's already March 1963. Great. Production quotas, discontent. It's low, and then lower by one. Decrease consumer goods. You know what? Why not? Save a little PP as well. So look at the plant minus 25% consumer goods. Um, this all positive except for growth, which is totally fine if growth isn't super high. Nice, I love it. Krasnoyarsk, it's your turn again. Come on, Krasnoyarsk, come on. Thank you, Krasnoyarsk. Oh, that's so mean to them. I love it, though. Uh, roads for grain. Infrastructure. Well, right now, we're so high with the amount we, that we've done, so I'm going to give maybe a little bit of a break first. Let's do the review of the chain of command. As a, a result of our rather unique military democracy hybrid government, officers in the army are actually elected by the people as opposed to appointed by some face of high command. All these officer elections have served to democratize the military, which has acted as a form of centralized government over the past few years. It has also opened the door to completely inept halfwits coming into the positions of power. Despite this, the military reserves the right to remove such elected officers from the positions of power should they prove incapable of carrying out the duties assigned to them. We should begin testing the officers currently power to make sure that such incompetent officers aren't ruining our brigades. Many heads are better than one. The map of Central Siberia reeked of mildew, the sides dotted with rips and tears, and city names rendered Ill Ill illegible from the decades of exposure to the elements. Through it all, however, the double-headed eagle sat resplendent in the corner, its watchful gaze promising to prevent any harm to befail Russia. Although the eagle watch very rarely did something stare back until the fa fat face of Viamin entered into its fields of vision. How the bad word is this? Are we really seeing maps from the Empire? He turned over to the rest of his peers, who were similarly hunched over the yellowing map. It's all but it's reliable. I brought pens. The man reached into his bag and retrieved six pens. We can mark out different communes from here. He uncapped his pen and immediately scribbled over the coat of arms of the House of Robinoff, snuffing out the bird for good. I suppose we can go alphabetically. What's the status of Baron's Katarina? What's well, an idea? We've been hit hard by communists of the East ever so often, but some better old men will cross into our lands and burn it all to the ground. The Black Army has promised an increased presence, but we've got nothing of the sort. The man nodded, drawing a skull and crossbones into the commune, diverting from Zelenogorsk. It's a possibility much of the industry there is left untouched. Thus became the pattern. For three long hours, the young Russians drew signs and stripes, painting a picture of the free land interwoven with arrows. Goods danced across the frozen tundra, springing from place to place as the hunt for the perfect balance escalated. The man finally set his pen down and admired his work. It was messy. But well put together. It was organized chaos, fitting for the free territory. Working together, there's nothing unachievable. See me my office. Officer Igor Skolnyak. A fiddle with his hat in his hands. He traced out the skull and crossbones woven in the fabric with his finger. This wasn't good. Igor lived nowhere near Kansk, but found himself boarding the train to the city after a very concise letter arrived on his doorstep. The seal of the Black Army stamped onto the parchment. Igor gulped as he looked up at the clock. Four hours since he arrived. On purpose, he was sure. The old dude knew he had to torture people. Companion Skornyak. Companion Mishurenko is ready to see you now, young woman. Her skirt had dark purple smiled as she handed out his death sentence. Igor took a deep breath and hung his head. It wasn't over. It, it, it could be a promotion? It could be an accident? Igor stood up and straightened out his suit, placing that squarely on his head. Mishurenko did not make mistakes. I came as soon as I received your label, 
letter, a companion, Mr. Renko. Igor fought the urge to wipe off his sweaty hands on his pants as he stood at his attention. I did notice your letter did not specify a reason for my arrival, companion. Igor looked to the general in his chair for support, but found none. Not that there would need to be one. I act on your behalf of those I am minded to call my peers, such as yourself, companion, Mr. Renko. Andronia Mishrenko looked at him with no clear emotion. His eyes drooping, mouth a light, straight line. What happened to the Russians? When did they become this pathetic? He wondered al out aloud. Igor felt the familiar symptoms of anxiety build or building. His hands began to act independently, grabbing at his suit just for the feeling of stability. Mishrenko rose from his seat. I have heard plenty about you, Igor. If the circumstances were any different, I would pity you. However, we live in a world, do, do we not? Igor didn't ask her. I need the most brilliant men in the most crucial stations. Your war approaches us, and your officer role is better suited to someone else. Igor, against his better judgments, protested. But companion Mishrenko, sir, I'm a democratically elected leader. Or officer. And I'm the man who will save Russia. Now get out. Oh, boy. Uh, we're getting command power, which is pretty much useless to me right now. So, do we have an upgrade? Yes, we do. There we go. Nice. Not useless. So right now, we can go ahead and do some more stuff here. So I did say we probably would go with emergency conscriptions. So, it's going to hurt us a little bit, but you know what? I'm kind of okay with that. They oppose it. Let's see what we can do. Request militia training. Uh, the standards of the community militia are not up to snuff, so we're still claiming the commune we're currently in talks with. Bandits are free, free of our lands, they say. Our people are fearful and undisciplined. They lack the training to defend themselves when the danger comes calling. Apparently, some instructors, diverted from the main free, main free territory militia, will go a long way towards improving the commune security. They would be most grateful for services rendered. Of course we stand together. Oh, we lose. That's all we lose is army XP. Not bad. So we finish the review of the chain of command. Experience learning. Da, da, da. Military factory would not be bad. Production cost does go down. How many... Ch oh, God. Yeah, we gotta do... Oh, we gotta do that one. Yeah. Mm, it's for two years. But within two years, we'll be, like, expanded anyway. So, enhanced equipment channels. Our current system of coordinating military supply chains, both to and from the factories that manufacture our arms, is not only inefficient, but also potentially a major hindrance to further growth and expansion, should, should such things become necessary. With this in mind, many bureaucrats working in the current system have proposed a number of reforms that could hopefully reduce the severity of the problems plaguing our supply chain. Such problems include high breakage rates, failure to track, and control inventory, bottlenecks, and many more. Fundamentally, all these problems are caused by inadequate communication. By installing phone lines between every factory and its supply depot, we'll be able to achieve a far greater level of communication than we've ever had before, hopefully improving our industrial situation. Nice. And also, I made sure that... Oh, yeah, factories. Let's go with agricultural methods, just because that's really good to do. And we'll do research facilities probably next after this one. I implemented worker concessions, just because I wanted this to be non-existent, so... Uh, so, we're, I mean, like I said, bearing plan, minus 20% is still pretty awesome. I mean, we're looking pretty good so far. Of course, we're going to continue expanding that. We'll get there. Let's get more output. 15% more output would be great. Army reserve training. Infrastructural reserve. Yes, please. Immediately. How are we looking over here? Not bad. Not great, but not bad. 7% will be done in July 9th, 63. And let's go and do this. And a little bit of lag. Whatever. Mm, consumer goods, industrial capacity. I see the max, the cap goes down a little bit. Uh, are we hurting for the cap at all right now? The cap efficiency, cap is 0.12, which isn't too bad. Resource extraction is kind of a waste. Uh, let's see, gain goes down. You know what? Mm, cap goes up a little bit more. Get cap with well, this one, cap goes up. Gain goes up. Efficiency goes down. I want more consumer goods. Screw it. We're minus 27%. Jesus. Beautiful. That, that, like, we're all building up for later on. This will just be very, very good for us. But let's go roads for grain. Building roads between the commons will become increasingly important if we were to ensure prosperity in commerce between the commons. To that end, we'll create a grain bank which will distribute extra grain in commons and build roads within and around the territory they control. This grain bank will be stocked voluntarily with grain provided by commons that have a surplus. In return, they'll be compensated monetarily or with any raw materials or any machinery with equal value to what they have provided. Very nice. Uh, can we raid anybody else? Are, are, are they actually killing each other over here? Nice. Let them kill each other off. And... Yes, I love building things. And we'll get 1,200 more manpower, which would be nice. We lose some stability and some more support, but I think it's I think it's worth it. Incentivize... Yes, yes. Incentivize qualified personnel. Uh, Siberian Soviet has an increasingly difficult time acquiring personnel in important fields like mechanical and electrical engineering. And this has been largely due to the absence of organized education across Russia post-collapse. The best way to go about alleviating the situation is to, to incentivize people to go into these professions by creating a mentor program for the men and women going into these fields. A student will be able to learn the craft under a trained professional and get paid by the government while doing so. Wow. Uh, Kemerovo and Novosibirsk are killing each other now. Yeah, this is a lot... Wow, minus... Wow, look at that. Oh, there goes Kemerovo. Nice. 
There's, they're very weak, which is good, but... Oh, boy. Oh, what can we do? Can we scavenge for loot? Oh, People's Revolutionary Council. Um, they're looking not weak, actually. 8,000. Yeah, let's not attack them. I'm a little scared of them choppas, so we'll wait, probably. Tom's has nothing. Krasnoyars has nothing. Articus has something, huh? Is it worth attacking Irkutsk? They have up to six divisions. They're probably fairly thick. Maybe we'll wait to see if Krasnoyarsk has anything else after that. Learning from experience, though. The Siberian Black Army is available to it. Some of the finest generals in all of Russia, from the Russian Civil War all the way up to the recent Siberian War. Our generals have experienced it all. We shall endeavor to utilize the collective experience of these generals to create a new officer training curriculum. Additionally, we should coordinate with our more recent generals to create uniform military doctrines in which the younger officers can become educated. Ah, loot. Give me your booties for the looties. Nice. Very, very good. And then we'll probably go back and do some civilian production or, or something. I don't know. Just the communes are just... It's such it's so incredibly strong to get more stability. Just 75 more political power? Oh, Israel's here. I, mean, I think that's just so good. Empower the Black Army. I want to improve... I want to do a lot of things here, but if we had like infinite political power, that'd be so nice. Um, nope, nothing else here. Learning from experience, specialized unit roles. Over time, it's become ever clearer to the Black Army military high command that in order to defend their nations, our forces need to further specialize as to keep pace with the other militaries of Russia. These individualized roles will become ever more important as we transition into a truly modern military force, complete with armored divisions and aerial support. Consequently, we will increase funding for specialized sections of the military. Such specialized roles include heavy ordnance, engineering, reconnaissance, and, of course, infiltration. Alright, 25... Uh, we have no loot, but we're getting there. Uh, war planning, that's alright. Ooh, there we go. Civilian stuff. Poverty rate does get better, which I would love, love, love. Infrastructure's not bad. Volunteer programs. Uh, it's only 450 for this much political power. Poverty rate. I love the poverty rate thing. Consumer goods and construction speed. How are we looking right now? Hey, we're at 8. Look at that. Nice. I mean, I think that's looking awesome. Uh, seizure facilities, militia reliance. Oh, wait. There's one here. We get more war support. That's not bad, actually. You get a thousand more manpower. Ooh, black army discipline. Army professionals does increase. So. We lose a lot of war support. You know what? Screw up. We're going to do this one. We'll do that one, and then we'll do increase militia reliance. And they oppose it. Oh, uh, they can be convinced. Uh, all the colonies within the free territory are dedicated to the values of freedom, equality, and democracy. But naturally, some divisions remain. Thankfully, the pertinent issue... Uh, uh, what is this? The pertinent issue for the commune we have been courting is relatively minor. They are all but completely on board with us and would require only a bit of convincing to vote for the proposed motion. Let's talk. Nice. Because as long as we're slowly, you know, still doing, you know, libertarian socialism, and we're still getting some more political power, I think we'll be, do okay. And all the made them from Krasnoyarsk. If you'd like to read about them, please go right ahead. Oh, they want to beat us up? Yeah, please just go right ahead. I mean, not much here. We're not going to back down, so. Come get our loot from our cold, dead hands. Uh, People's Revolution and Central Siberian Republic. No, we're good. Expand the rules. I want to do this, but... Hmm. I want to go, like, full one way. Ooh, we get more political power that way. A Black Spring. Resume the liberation of Central Siberia. Ooh. All around us, the rains of April have stopped coming down. The trees are in full leaf. Fledglings are learning to fly, and the Rasputitsa is coming to an end. We with it, we're going to the muddy roads that swallow entire military brigades and that that and that destroys more Russian trucks and tanks than any other military ever has. With summer right around the corner and the spring mud drying up, we are entering into a short period of time between now and autumn, that when the roads are clear and the weather is fair, we should take advantage of the time we have and begin preparing for war, as those around us certainly are as well. Nice. The enemy is defeated. Uh, if you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. We get stability, political power, and more guns, which is actually something we can really, 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 really use. Nice. If we could take out Krasnoyarsk, it would be kind of nice. Or even Chernyshevsky. Nice. Whose booties can we raid? Hey, Krasnoyarsk. I love Krasnoyarsk. Thank you for losing to us, and we'll beat you up now. Let's go, 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 go. Come on, come on. Beat him up, beat him up, beat him up, beat him up. I love beating up weaker people. Let's go, go, go. They refuse tribute? Ah, I love it when they refuse. Alright. Well, we'll see what happens. 
So we did that on the final preparations, gearing up. Black Guard units. I don't mind getting that. I'm going to wait for this one. I want to see if we can do anything. So the final preparation. Final checks are underway to ensure that the army is ready for the conflicts to come. The soldiers are training. Maintenance on trucks and tanks is underway. Our war plans are being reviewed. And our stockpile of arms is being built up. Our people are armed and ready to spread the anarchist dream to all of Russia. It won't be long before we are ready to embark upon the great unification of a truly Soviet Union. Ruled by the people, not dictatorships like those of Bukharin or Yagoda. All right, our armies are not looking great because we're probably really out of equipment. Hey, we got a positive amount of infantry equipment. If you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. Beautiful. Nice. And I did say I would do research facilities next, so thank you very much. So now everything should be going up. Oh, wait. Oh, once it's removed, everything will be going up, including army professionalism. If you'd like to read about treasure, please go right ahead as well. But 75 more political power is where it is at. I love it. All right, up next. Consumer goods factories. Where are you? Industrial gain. Production maximum. Production efficiency. So, factory industrial capacity needs to go up. 2.5% factory gain capacity. I'm doing that one. I don't care what anything else. So, we have a little more political power. Th minus 35% consumer goods. That's so nice. So beautiful, my friends. Oh, just like all of us. Well, maybe not, but yeah, whatever. Increase production quotas. Uh, now nah, we're good. Decrease stuff. Divert civilian stuff. Increases. Ooh. I'm a little tempted. We already have 100% stability, which is nice. Consumer goods factories output. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, God. How, how, how high can we get this? Minus 42%. Oh, good God. That's so much. I love it. Novus will be us. I'll tell you the central. Oh, yeah. Let these guys kill each other off, which is going to be actually pretty difficult for us to take out. We're actually looking relatively okay here. Final preparations are nice. Freedom for Krasnoyarsk. The workers of Krasnoyarsk have been oppressed under the boot of the autocratic state for too long. We must free the workers of Krasnoyarsk from the oppressive false democracy. Nikolai Andreev and his military apparatus has continued their stranglehold over Krasnoyarsk for too long and, oh my gosh, whose military has worked towards the democratization and liberation of Russia, their has done nothing but restrict workers' rights and strengthen government power. We march on Krasnoyarsk at dawn. Nuke atmosphere, huh? There we go. Oops. Uh, there you go. Oh, okay. People are killing each other. But what else is new in Russia? I'm sorry, my little ready buddy, but gearing up, my friends. We must gear up. <clears throat> now, I want to gear up and be able to core this place, too, just because we're going to need as much political power and manpower as... More, really more manpower as fast as possible. So, the tapsters who have worked at the little bar in the corner worked hard to bring life to the establishment. Bright lights and booze, paintings and pianos, darts and dice, there were no price too high to make the building seem less than a moldy sanctuary. And more, a place more like one could rely on to cater to their absolute alcoholic needs. But those efforts were all in vain as it was the conversation that gave the dingy bar life. Pavel reeled back in a fit of laughter, clasping his hands together in mock prayer. So imagine this. No, picture this. A soldier slammed his hand down on the bar, trying to bring the rowdy band of men around into silence. I actually drove through Krasnodarsk a few months ago. The people all there looked like this. Pavel leaped up from his stool and widened his stance, shoving his hands in his pockets and waddling around in a circle. <clears throat> The banded soldiers ran through, back their heads in laughter. Soon they would be in Krasnoyarsk too, shooting the man they mimicked. As of now, it didn't matter where they would be. Although it hung in their minds that this moment of laughter of brotherhood was fleeting. Although this, the unspoken, inevitably not that not all of them would return to this location and wafted through the room like a cloud of smoke. It didn't matter. For the, in the moment they, in which they lived, they laughed and they laughed as a two and a half meter tall man marched through around in a circle, drunk as one could be. Vavel plopped down, down into a seat with a thud, gripping on for dead life onto the counter as so not to fall. He looked around to the 20 soldiers all around him, his 20 brothers, and decided that he was ready to die so all the others could live, so others could be as free as 20 drunk Russians in a bar. Well, the anarchy sons have no bill at the Count's liquor house. Nice. For 50 days? Pretty good. Pretty good. Keep building us up, though. Keep building, 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 building. After we get freedom, measured... Integration, justice for the crimes, huh? Growing black army control. As the free territory continues to expand and modern, as more and more administrative roles are fulfilled by the black army with a push toward central, centralized bureaucracy, the roles once left to community leaders see themselves occupied by soldiers, increasing arrest and a repression of dissenting thought as it further solidified the power of the apparatus supposed to defend the freedom. The power of the state grows. Oh boy, justice for the crimes. A people's war. Despotism. Uh, libertarian socialism. We'll probably go with that one, but we'll have to do that one eventually. Uh, Blackguard units. I think that might be pretty good for us to do. We can wait for this stuff, so. 
of the Black Guard units. Among the finest warriors of the Russian Civil War were Tachankas. Tachankas, brave soldiers who charge into battle with, with on horse-drawn wagons with machine guns. We should create a new unit of similar strength and prowess. A newly created Black Guard will fill this role, accepting only the best the Black Army has to offer. This leader organization wants to do the testing of members of the armed forces to gauge who and who would not be eligible to join this new group. The heavily armored units will eventually be able to rapidly deploy around the country and set up defensive and or offensive positions wherever needed. <clears throat> nice. Alright, so we're immediately engaging them, which isn't good. Uh, let's see, nothing over here. Implementing motion, that's fine. If we can move right on in, that'd be great. Inf infrastructural reserve, nice. Let's grab some comprehensive strategic analysis, that'd be good. We're not quite winning here, but that's alright. Uh, oh, Hitler's dead. Bye, Hitler. Have a good, have a nice life. And we'll probably the Civil War very, very soon. We want to cut them all off. Keep moving in, boys. We're almost there to cutting them off from the capital. Nice. There you go. Extra support. That's nice. These guys will definitely die here, though. And I'm going to save the political power for coring stuff after we do some more loot stuff, because loot is nice. Oh, and probably the German Civil War starting. Oh, please don't crash. Please don't crash. Nice. So it begins. Odenstadt and Burgund. Oh, Odenstadt and France. Well, how many men have we lost in this battle so far? A thousand versus a thousand. Not great, but hey. Kiosk and Aslan. Very nice, very nice. Black God units. Ah, uh, was that from Siege? That might be from Siege. Huh. Oh, hello. Are, are these elite units? Oh, good God, it's lagging. Oh, there we go. 15 combat width. Yeah, some of them are elite units. Not bad, not bad. Eh, that's not bad. Uh-oh. People's Revolutionary Council. Well, it looks like those are people we gotta take out them. Come on, kill them all faster, faster, faster. Uh, assist village schools. How about that? Education is the foremost way in which we can bring our communes out of their ancient ways of thinking into the 20th century. We should give the communes more resources for the development of their educational services, which they can use to better build better schools and ed higher education centers. As part of the program, we will provide higher quality teachers from the cities to assist in training new teachers over the course of the next few years. Additionally, we should endeavor to increase the enrollment in schools and colleges so that our people might take advantage of these new resources available to them. Come on, kill them off. Come on. Why are you taking so long? Seriously, you're, you're taking way too long here. Are you... Are you? What, what are you doing? What the... What the heck are you doing? Why are you taking so long? Move, 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 move. Are they... Come on, seriously. Just kill them off. Thank you. Woof. Crest Norris Grove Junction captured. Crashing through the forested mountains surrounding the city, our men have overrun the city of Krasnoyarsk, and with it we have taken the widely discussed Krasnoyarsk Railway Junction. The tall and mighty station building stretched across an urban space and dominated our soldiers' view. It was a logistical fortress, stuffed with bulky metal trains resting on its platforms. With the crucial junction of the Trans-Siberian Railway now under our control, we can now more vastly improve our logistics or logistical abilities in performing the Herculean task of reuniting Russia. Piling heaps of ammo caches and supply crates onto the trains, we can deliver these resources through our front lines far more effectively or efficiently, as well as increasing the speed in which our com communications can be delivered. Our grasp of the Krasnoyarsk Railway Junction will stretch our influence across Siberia and is a step towards extending our control and power to reunite Russia under our watch. A boon to be sure. Nice. More speed, less supply consumption, and more construction speed, plus 15%. Good lord, that's nice. Everyone hold and go back down south. Oh boy. They can probably go to war whenever they want. We gotta do this immediately. Go, 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 go. Oh, Africa Shield. Very nice. Uh, Oslin, Oslin, Serbs rises up. Cool. Hey, look at that. GDP, nice. Donuts is down there. Good. So, I'm going to assume they're going to go to war with us whenever they want. Well, hopefully they go to war soon, because I don't want to be caught in a multi-front war. South African war? Nice. Oh, wait. They're not fighting us. They're fighting someone else. Um, we'll do a measured integration because I think that's probably what the way we want to go with this one. So, though many of the autocrats and statists that previously ruled Krasnoyarsk are arguably irredeemable and will be put on death row, many more of these government officials were part of the proletariat like us and solely wished to see the government do well by those it was tasked with ruling. We should reach out to these individuals and pardon them for having participated in the oppressive democracy of Krasnoyarsk, hopefully. Such mercy will aid us in integrating this new territory and ease the process of shifting into communal society. We lose political power, war support, get more stability. So, what makes a teacher teach? I don't know. I have no idea. Let's see. 
Well, we need some artillery. Yeah, we definitely could use some artillery here. Uh, Arties, thank you. There you go. Um, keep you on two. We're looking not too bad overall. So, wrangling unruly Russian children was already a daunting task. But wrangling unruly chil Russian children who've been taught their whole lives that the only thing that truly mattered to them was their freedom and independence was not impossible. Still, Timofey persisted, or rather, Mr. Smirnov persisted. He still wasn't used to that. Being a mister, the initial shock of being brought into staff had not yet worn off. It was still inexplicably odd to him that people looked up to him. Education was hard work. The young man found respite in the break room chair and stirred his tea. Physically, he had re retrieved his pen and begun drafting his lesson plan for the next day. Mentally, he was back in the General Assembly, one amongst the rows of people tightly packed in the building. A smell of rotting wood and sweat, but felt exhilarating. He had been leaning forward in his seat, watching the fiery speaker gestulating at the podium. <clears throat> His passion seeped out of him and dribbled to the floor, soaking in the floorboards and expanding outwards to the crowd. Soon the creature swallowed Timofey's shoes, his whole body soon to follow. The speaker roared in the name of education, overwhelming Timofey in his drive. <clears throat> Timofey twitched in his chair and shivered down his spine, bringing him back to the present. He looked around the simple break room, only a table, a pair of chairs, and some tea. He wondered what made the man who spoke at the assembly go into teaching, but Timofey had his assumptions. A teacher is a light, a guiding force for those in the dark and in a land consumed by darkness. Lord knew that they could all use a little light. Freedom for our sons and daughters, education for all. That bonus of electronics. Interesting. Cool. I'm ready for them to come. Come on. Come kill us. Ooh. A and C. Oh, yeah. They're all fighting each other because they're all united for now. For, yeah, united for now. <clears throat> Not bad. Uh, so these guys died. So People's Revolutionary Council, we're ready. Come on. Go to war with us. Come on. Go, 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 go. I thought they were going to war with us. Or was that someone else? Was it these guys that wanted to go to war with us? No? What do we have up here? Prepare raid. I mean, I suppose we could. That seems pretty darn risky, though. They don't have anyone over here. Our soldiers... They probably actually have enough equipment, actually, so... With the extra manpower we've gotten so far, that's not maybe a bad idea, but... They're looking pretty stacked. And attacking into these areas, into... Ah, that's planes! Oh, we could risk it. We could definitely try to risk it. Or maybe they'll raid us. You know what? Maybe we'll hold on. Maybe we want to bait them into attacking us first. Cooperation with... Cooperation with the workers. Oh. Despite having nothing more than a false revolutionary who actively worked against the rule of the true workers' revolution, Andreev was still worried what the workers would do if they decided he was unfit to rule. In order to keep the workers satisfied, Andreev created various workers' organizations both to keep the workers in check, which would allow token increases in wages or rations every now and again. We should reach out to these workers' and organizations and see if they would be interested in assisting our efforts to create true worker paradises. And get more manpower, which is something we could really, really, really use. Comprehensive strategic analysis. Very nice. Let's grab some more organization and recovery rates. Uh, Supreme Soviet. Oh, I don't know about that one. We got 43 days left. The Algerian War. Very cool. Very, very cool. Cooperation. Nice. Oh, look at that. Skobelev. Uh-oh. Lagging a little bit more. <laughs> look at all that society development. I love it. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. We actually lost all that political power. Jeez. Well, oh. Do we actually make it? Oh, we actually made a division. Look at that. So I think at this one, I'm going to go back to the communes so we can get some more libertarian social support because that's a massive boost to our ideology. Get more stability, get more political power. I love it. Are you guys... Oh, Tomsk is looking mighty thick. This is not good. 200,000 man... Oh, they don't have that many divisions, though. Oh, I love it. Uh, let's see. Krasnoyarsk pacified. After a short but relatively tumultuous occupation, it seems that the Krasnoyarsk is really fully ready. Uh, whoa. For integration into the Siberian Soviet. The subversives here have been tried and executed either by our military or by the good workers of the Krasnoyars. Workers' organizations have begun or been contacted and helped us gain the trust of the people while simultaneously helping us to set up local communes and the gears of industry and communal economy have started to return, producing much needed weaponry for the liberation of Siberia. The anarchist revolution spreads further. Nice. Mass mechanization is very nice to have. 65. Let's see. Yeah, I still want more output. I still want more output. Because they're still doing our stuff over there, which is pretty good. Finish military government steps down. Goodbye. Pacified, pacified, pacified. Slightly decreased scoring time, huh? Nice. A big left tent. He would be shot. Misha knew that it would be only a matter of time. The savages were smart and terrified him. They're still savages. They could not organize a union, but they had no idea how they would conduct international diplomacy, let alone deal with the international or internal challenges of strongman politicians. 
They knew one thing, hatred. Freedom was tertiary. He shifted his weight. <clears throat> I should have done them in by now at this point. It was a cruel punishment to be packed in here with the fellow members of the Social Democratic Party of Krasnoyarsk. Misha saw then the men walking on the makeshift stage quickly assembled in the middle of the meeting hall turned prison cell. About time, Misha thought. The people stepping to the podium were not officers to Misha's chagrin, but the representatives of the General Assembly. Greetings, companions. I would like to apologize for packing you in here, but I hope you understand the circumstances are a little on as of now. I encourage you to take a deep breath. The man followed his own instructions, inhaling the sweat and mildew of the room and coughing it out soon. Few in the crowd made half-hearted attempts to mimic the presenter, mostly out of fear, while most just looked on in confusion. This is the first breath without the weight of oppression on your backs. While some of the men you may have called allies, even friends, face justice for your actions, we do not believe in indiscriminate violence. That is a policy of oppressors we stand against. So you heard us in this room to tell us that you're not going to kill us? Misha wondered out loud. <clears throat> Oh, no, it's much more than that. The presenter reassured, you have certain responsibilities now, we all do. Despite our success here, we are also conducting a grand experiment. <clears throat> Misha scoffed at the audience. Some success this was. The town had been a playground for the Black Army. In order for the people of Siberia, of Russia, of the world, even to be offered a new opportunity, you need, we need you there. You know the city better than us. You are trusted by the people and have proven yourselves to open the, to the cause of the left. In the coming days, your party will be responsible for the reorganization towards a commune. We should nod it in consideration. Well, he thought, maybe they weren't savages after all. Social Democrats and anarchists make for a strange bedfellows. Nice, and we're out of our deficit of good stuff. And the court of a mad king, Kemerovo. Uh, well, I think Kemerovo's gone now, so if you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Cast down the crown. I don't think we can do that, so if you'd like to read that, please go right ahead again. Justice for Julia Leopold in the wake of the collapse of the Soviet Union. Siberia became what most would call anarchy, opportunistic generals, idealistic democrats, and kings all alike carved out their own little states. Without regulation, the situation in Siberia slipped out of hand of any one man or body, and that most used this time as an opportunity to iron out any grudges. We have our own quarrels as well to the south lies of the People's Revolutionary Council, a warlord clique of former Soviets. It's no secret that the militarists, Soviets, have wronged us before, and now is the time to settle this difference for the good. Very good. Uh, we could do that. Oh, see, uh, both are gone. Nice. Uh, we do have one loot. You might as well do that, right? <clears throat> and let's go ahead and do justice for the Julia Pol people. Julia Pol. Nice. Very nice. Let's see. Power tools. Not bad. Not bad. After this one, let's see. Ooh. Hey, look at that manpower. We cord the. Chris Noyers, look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Owns Tanutuva. Well, eventually. We'll do the contradiction settle. Just as the Western or the Soviet Union before us, we have arrived at some final conclusions as to how far the central government powers extends and what rights are reserved for the people of commun communes. The contradictions inherent to our anarchist state have finally been solved, and with it, a number of logistical and administrative issues that had previously plagued the general government. Whatever path has been chosen, it's important to remember that, well, that with all we've done, we've done in the service of the greater good and the Russian people. May history look back upon us kindly. Oh, we just go to straight to war with them. Hey, another division, nice. Can we go literally just straight in? Maybe. You help them out here. <clears throat> and all you guys get to Kaisel. Go to Ugl. I want you to go to there and there. We should do relatively okay. We need to save our political power up next for the commune stuff. Uh, we're actually slowly winning here, huh? I would recommend you do this. Oh, there's a chopper division. Choppas. Choppas, choppas, choppas. Not much on there, actually. Nice. I want you to get down here to Alte and go to Murun. Murun? I have no idea how to pronounce that. Oh, that political power is man power is not looking great. Contradiction settled. That's okay. As long as we can win. That's the most important thing. Just... Oh, crap. They have IFVs. Oh, no. Uh, if you're going down there anyways, you go there. Why don't you go straight here? Um, is there any way we can circle these guys and cut them off? Yeah, you got to go that way. Um, equipment, workers, agriculture methods. We're going to go with equipment. Uh, I'm going to do the civilian, uh, where's the communes? Yeah, I mean, stability, political power, just, it's too good to pass up, man. It's just too good. Oh, we actually beat the IBs too? Look at that. Wow. I'm loving the Siberian Black Army. The Bolshevites of Soviets, eh? Well, I don't think we'll be able to win that fast, so mobility revisited. Our armored divisions have been left very far behind technologically in the race to reunite Russia. In order to rectify the situation, We've been at reverse engineering captured German, Japanese, and American tanks left over from the Siberian War and other previous conflicts. The technological insights gained from these designs, as well as a large array of data based on the performances of the T-34 and T-44 tanks in previous wars, has allowed us to create an entirely new and original vehicle or tank design. We love it. Um, how are we doing here? Can you guys help out here? Actually, that'd be pretty nice. 
Uh, contradiction settled. Very cool. Nice. Keep them there for now. Okay, so if you can't win, just hold for now. That's fine. I want you to go down there. That's good. I want you to go there and go to there as well. Look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Oh. Well, we gotta do both, so. Common request funding. Uh, the issue of funding is common one in the General Assembly. The fair and equal distribution of funds is not an easy task, and it's not rare for at least a few individuals to be unsatisfied with their share. Normally, this could be blamed purely on flawed human nature, but we know the communes to be such beyond such petty trifles. Therefore, the communes approach us asking for due recognition of their needs in the form of economic assistance is only doing what they believe to be fair and necessary for the well-being of the people, or so they claim. <clears throat> Were we to demonstrate our goodwill and belief in the spirit of fairness, we would be more inclined to support us in our present endeavors. Sure. We are once again asking for your financial assistance. But despite being a post-capitalist society, the economy is, is as important to the communes as well. As ever, actually. We have made headway in establishing total economic equality between all peoples of the free territory, but individual communes remain buried in the wealth. This is a lamentable situation, but difficult to remedy. Complicating affairs further is the insistence by some communes that require more economic autonomy to maintain or attain the very equality we're working towards. The class is with their values, but has some practical wisdom to it, and permitting it might make them more amenable to supporting our situation. Totally fine. Go right ahead. If we support it, that's great. Go ahead and hold... Oh, these guys are fighting them too. Well, hopefully we win here. Uh, anything else? We can do, I know, this stuff and this stuff, but that stuff is really isn't concerning me too much. I We just have to win. Go ahead and hold. Oh, yeah. There you go. If we can break over that river, that's super, super important. Nice. You help them out here. We take the capital. The new capital is doing to us. Oh, all right then. Nice. We've got to get down there faster than the enemies can, so. A million in debt, huh? 10,000? We've lost about 1,000 times because trying their best, too, so. Uh, can we actually beat them up here? Because we got to move quickly. I want you guys, yes, get down there immediately. Um, you guys help out and just go down there immediately. If we capture the victory points fast enough, we'll do okay here. Cool. All right. Mobili mobility revisited. Coverage from above. Let's do... Expand on the design. Developments in the technology and our design infrastructure have finally allowed us to make headway into our new MBT design, our new ma main battle tanks. This new tank will incorporate various new technologies such as electric starters, two-plane gun stabilization, basic night vision equipment, ammo load of 45, and four-stroke, one-chamber, water-cooled diesel engine. This design still lags behind modern tanks in a variety of ways, and some of these new technologies in the design are less than reliable. Nonetheless, the tank represents a quantum leap forward in Russian armor technology and will lay the foundation of our modern armored military. Nice. Are we moving in? Good. Keep moving in. Keep moving in. Uh, you're gonna hold. Don't help them out. I want them, the enemies, to struggle as much as possible. Good. 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 Oh, there's the choppers there. We're moving straight in. Nice. You're not gonna attack there and beat us up. Nope. Help them out. Help them out. They support us. Good. I love support. Who doesn't love getting supported? You know. You hold, because you're only militia. Oh, we got in circle. That's not good. Uh, actually, you hold. It's more like you guys attack. We actually might be in circle and kill them off. Gods of the north, huh? Good. Go, 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 go. You find them, and you beat the snot out of their horses. I'm sorry to the horses, but it has to happen. Come on. Don't let them in. Good. We beat them up. You guys immediately put more pressure on these guys. And we should be down there very, very soon. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Expand on the designs, nice. I'm actually going to wait to read the next focus. We should be able to get down there and... Come on. There goes the government. Oh, that's it. Ah, oh, we got him. I knew we'd get him. I knew he would. Immediately begin integrating both places. Prepare a raid on those guys. Uh, I think I'm good right now. We have a little bit of manpower left, which is actually really awesome. Uh, how are these guys doing? Tomsk is looking mighty thick, and I'm a little scared of them. But we do have more divisions, technically, so... But we have no mobilized units, so. The Bolshevize the Soviets. The Bolshevik system spits in the face of the traditional purpose of the workers' union, designed with the express purpose of giving the workers sway over the rulers. This is the opposite of how trade unions operate under Vasilev's scheme. Unions must be removed of management by the central government. If they are not, then they are nothing more than extensions of the state. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're doing that. Uh, we could beat the snot out of these guys, maybe... That's not bad. Our guys are learning how to be pretty strong here. You know what? Maybe we'll try it. 
Who knows? Maybe they just refuse tribute, so. Doesn't cost us too much to do that, anyways. Hmm. I'd like to increase construction speeds more, but. Let's see, where are we at with this? Minus 42%. Construction speed cap output resource efficiency gained. Construction speed 0.12. Factory output cap. Hmm. Production quotas. It's just a little bit more construction speed. Just a little bit more. And we save some political power, so. We're still at 40%. I mean, minus 40% is really good. Construction speed. How are we doing with actually construction speed? We have 10. Nice. And I wanted to save some political power, too. Uh, scan for Luke as you can. Give you guys a few more days to be over there, and then let's read the next one first. Secure the frontier. With the liberation of the major cities in the south, the Black Army's found itself with a much larger swath of territory to manage and patrol. While recruitment numbers are on in the up and up, willing or otherwise, the newly liberated lands will need some time to adjust from the stark transition from lives of, lives of tyranny to those of freedom. The Black Army desperately needs a breather, and so do the people of Siberia. We are more than happy to comply. Taking control of ourselves. Uh, I think I've already read this one, so the power of the people grows. If you'd like to read about this again, please go right ahead, but I think we already read that one, technically, so... Alright, let's go in. Come on, give it up, boys. I asked and they gave it up. Good job. Yagoda is pathetic. More breakthrough in organization? Yes, please. Thank you very much. We have 50 political, uh, fifty war support, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Well, I like to core more, but more consumer goods, anyone? Increases consumer goods. Uh, increases discontent by one. I want to lower discontent then. Increases it by five. How do we lower discontent by three? Um, well, we did both, so this would make it go up by two. Technically, we did both of these. Increases consumer goods. Increases uh, factory output. There you go. It's low. I want to lower it some more. So where are we at with this then? Minus thirty-five percent. So the next one will be more consumer goods. So lower a, uh, what they need. Greater. Granted, granted time to be weak. That's nice. Granted economic stability. Ah, yeah, there goes Tricky Dick. Cool. Military society. Supreme free territory, of course. Cool. Secure the frontier, my friends. Slightly decreased scoring time. That's not bad. Two men, two lives. Step. Pan Valentiev was a soldier in the Red Army before he was companion Valentiev before Russia had been shattered into pieces by the Wehrmacht before it fell apart. Valentiev was, of course, a soldier in the Red Army. But Alexander Valensinsky is a soldier in the Red Army before he was a rebel in Mongolia after Russia had been shattered to pieces by the Wehrmacht. After it all fell apart, Alexander Val Valensinsky is a soldier in the Red Army. Valentiev thought of this past and the past of the man beside him as he walked down the hallway. He wasn't sure what to say or even if he should say anything at all. The click of the boots occupied the silence. Valevsky was his prisoner, a captured combatant, and nothing more. At least that's what the records would say. Valentiev was caught off guard when the letter from Valevsky found himself on his desk. It was further taken aback when inside he saw demands. He was sure he had lost it when he accepted them. Mercifully, Valevsky broke the silence. Good, thank you, comrade Valentiev. Stepan did not respond out of arrogance or frustration or anything of the matter. He didn't respond because he couldn't. They were just walking until the doors were before them. A truck was waiting for them outside, its bag covered with the, with the top so as to not have the contents fall out from behind it. Valevsky made his way around the vehicle, inspecting it for any faults. Valentiev spoke suddenly, what will you do? The question caught him off guard. Valevsky froze in his place. What will you do once you get there? Valentiev repeated. When I get back to my city, I think I will rest. I will rest and hope I will see the day you march into the city yourself and drive out the Germans from this country for good. We must have luck to you, comrade. Decrease consumer goods factories? Oh yes, please. Oh, sign me up. Nice. Oh, well, bad words. Bad words all over the place. Um, if you can, go ahead and stop them, maybe, if you can, wherever you're at. Maybe, we'll see what happens. If that's the case, we're going straight for Tomsk. We're going to go up here and go straight up there. And you guys are going to come down here and go to Novosibirsk. Well, that is a bunch of BS. I knew they were going to go to war with us, but I didn't know it was going to be this fast. So you guys just hold for now. I don't want you to get cut off, either. You guys go in there, and if you can cut them off, that'd be great. We could really use some motorized units. Holy bad words. Oh, uh, you hold in. Because they may have some mobile units. Oh, I should make it in a circle mine of territory, huh? Um, Alright. There you go. That should help you out. Go straight for you. Go cut these guys off as fast as possible if we can. Oh boy, this is not looking great. But hey, we're beating up some people in some places, helping out in other places. 
As long as we hold well enough, you gonna? Uh, we actually might want to do this a little bit like this. Actually, encircle these guys first. If this central line breaks, I mean they're done. So, and actually, you guys can help out too. Yep, we found some enemy divisions here. Militia hold. Go right there. Nope, hold them in place, hold them in place. You guys get up there too. Secure the frontier, not bad. Increase local cooperation. We get more manpower. Revolutionary Security Administration. So, well, we'll probably go with increased local cooperation. The status actors of Russia have ensured that the term anarchy is synonymous with chaos, death, and destruction. This could not be farther from the truth. And truth, anarchy is what the state fears most. It doesn't mean the total breakdown of society with no control. It simply means that they that they have no control. Due to the conditioning of the previous regime, the Siberian leftists are wary of cooperating with us. But with a simple explanation of our true values and po policies, they'll be quick to fold into the ranks. My apologies about that, but let's continue with the destruction of, hopefully, this enemy nation. Uh, actually, just go in here. It makes more sense. At least you can do one enemy division at a time first. That probably could be okay. You guys stop attacking. We don't want to have any unnecessary losses. Manpower is very limited, even though we do have a small, small stockpile right now. Oh, they're going to encircle us, aren't they? Hmm. Yeah, I've got... That's that's uh, going to be a bit too much of a big aspiration. I want you guys to go down here, actually, yeah. Go over here and then go there. Take out the capital. Growing Black Army Control, if you'd like to read about this, go right ahead. The power of the state grows. Oh, boy. Oh, look, we have more divisions. Nice. All right. Uh, if you'd like to come into here, yeah, uh, that might be a bit of a concern. Hey, but we got these guys in circle. Very nice, very nice. Help them out first, and they'll go up north. Help them out. Uh, come on. Yes, go. Nice. Go straight down if you can. Thank you. And Lozano. All right, help them out. Good. Those guys are dying. That's a great thing to see. Up oh, and they're going to circle us again. Up, oh, yeah, they definitely are going to try to encircle us. But that's exactly what we're doing to them. Nice. Uh, not bad. Where are you going, sir? Where are you going? No, no, no. No, 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 no. Nope. You guys are all going to die in Kemerovo, whether you like it or not. Oh, bye bye, President Kennedy. Have a good life. Oopsie. Never mind. Nice. We encircle us a little bit. We encircle them a little bit. You know, it's all fair and warfare, I guess. There you go. Beat them up. You find them. Are they alive? Not for long. Do not let them move. Do not let them move. Oh, look at that. We have no manpower. Anything over here? Not too much. Worker discontent is at 11, which I don't like. Um, we're looking pretty good all around here. So... Equipment is usually pretty good to do, but we don't have that. Agriculture is really good to do, so you get more manpower, I think. Commies are still good to do, though, too. Oh, man. I could use a more just more political power and stability, please. I'm a sucker for PP and uh, political power. Or, no, that is PP. Stability and such. Right? Right, Pink? Are you okay? My cat is back in the room, but now he's going to leave very soon, too. Yeah, buddy. Well, would you look at that? Speak to the Agarians. If you'd like to read about that, go right ahead. If you'd like to read about the Return of the People's Wealth, go right ahead. The Ground, the Siberian Falcon, as well as Increased Cooperation. We did that one. Very nice. A progressive peasantry? Now that the conservative peasants of Zaboloko have organized themselves into a commune, it is time to shift the local Overton window to the left, like normal. Anarchism is not a good first step for them. Progressive ideals shall be implemented incrementally, starting first with liberal democracy, social democracy, socialism, and ending up at anarchism down the line. It'll only be a matter of time before they are saying companion like the rest of us. Nice. Oh, we lose, we lose some more support, but that's okay. Now, we're not exactly winning here yet, but for the common Murun. Or Moran, I guess. How did Misha allow himself to get roped into this? Ironic that he'd be visiting Morun. If he, he had to be, if this was what his life was now. He didn't hate living under the Black Army. It certainly beat the regime of Andri, but it was a bit extreme for his liking. The Social Democratic Party was much more up his alley, but yet, whether he feel the repercussions or deep down in his heart, he saw the potential for greatness. Misha agreed to travel to the newly liberated territory. Here, he commanded, this is the place. Mongolia was never an industrial powerhouse. Misha was familiar with a khanate that once laid claim to the entirety of Eurasia, but this was not the grandiose house of the Genghis. This was a meeting hall eight 
me meeting hall eight in the retirement home. <laughs> Misha threw the door open, his entourage closely following behind him. The scene before him brought a smile to the bitter old man. The hammer and sickle, the rose, the brilliant tapestry of a star atop the so soy open bowl. The military may have been lacking, but the art and crafts department surely got all the budget. A little under a hundred men and women crowded into the room, each wearing some memorabilia of the respective party. Greetings, companions. Misha faked a large grin and followed the script. The massive turnout here shows something that we are making real progress. Misha put up put his all into the act, but the unenthused crowd was having no part of it. Now I want you to take a deep breath. Misha stopped, letting out a sigh. Uh, <clears throat> listen, I'm going to cut the BS with you. The General Assembly wants me to give you this spiel about liberation and freedom, but that's all it looks. The visibly, visibly confused occupants of the room raised their eyebrows. Was this some kind of joke? Misha could see the things were going south. Listen, I, uh, it's just that Misha took a deep breath. It's that I cannot explain how this will work with just a few pre-made speech. Anarchy is something you must enjoy for yourself. I have seen it firsthand. I've lived in a state where people were shot or they passed out from exhaustion. I've seen tyranny firsthand and I was used to it. It hardly fazed me at the time. Now, I've seen the alternative. I have seen true cooperation and it's beautiful. You can all bring that to your commune. You can bring cooperation. Many glances were shared between the different parties before they looked back to Misha, giving their nod of approval. Not too bad for a reformed conscript. Now, it says we're losing here. And we are. But not for long. But not for long, really. I mean, to be honest, with you, whatever happens here doesn't matter as long as we win all these battles. So, hey, we took Tomsk too. Nice. Get Novosibirsk, and the next capital is where? Kemerovo? Maybe? But what are you doing, son? Help him out. Oh, crap. Now, that's exactly what we did not want. That is exactly 100% what we did not want. All right, because you, you get punishment, you're going to force the attack. You failed in attacking. You are pathetic little soldiers. Holy crap. We had such a great encirclement, and you ruined it. Why would you ruin this? Why? You're going in. You're going straight in. You're not leaving. No, 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 no. You're going to beat the crap out of these soldiers. You're going to die trying. There is no peace for people like this who put, turn their back on attacking. Zero peace. Walk straight in and kill every single one of these pieces of garbage off. Good. Come over, completely surrounded. Kill them off. Kill every single one of them off. Force the attack. There is no peace for you guys here. Nope. You've already failed. You failed once. Uh, whatever. Uh, if you like to read about the Kuznets Basin, I'm just more focused on taking these guys out right now, so. Pathetic. This army is pathetic. You get no, no, no peace here. Nope. You had the chance to do well, and you, you lost to completely encircle these enemies. You lost it, and this is your punishment. Pathetic. Absolutely 100% pathetic. Uh, if you'd like to read about the airplane craft, please go right ahead. But I'm not pissed off, but I'm very extremely irritated at the failure of our soldiers. Completely pathetic. No, you're going straight in, son. Oh, look at Hadrish. Poor Hadrish. Poor, poor Hadrish. And we shall do coverage from above. With the efforts of several dozen scientists from across the commons, we've been able to scrap together the wrecks of several downed German bombers, as well as a few indigenously designed fighters from our neighbors, which we've been reverse engineering. With help from these parts these aircrafts have provided, we have developed a small number of new designs for aircraft that will put us on par with our neighbors, and allow us to forego propellers of the past and begin making headway into the jet engines of the future. Look, your failure up north will result in you dying. So, I mean, I don't know what they expected. So, sorry. Oh, well. Borman is one. Good job, Borman. I got more factories. That's nice. Uh, what can we use? Yeah, some of these army units, these democratically elected officers, some of them definitely got to get shot. Like, I don't care. That's that's pathetic to us. And we shall end this episode with revolutionize the apparatus. Our communes pride themselves in the grand vision they share for Russia, one of absolute liberation, not concessions from a Tsar, a foe workers state, headed by authoritarians who wish to re continue the policies of oppression of the last regime. The Central Siberian Republic was yet another sham republic made to lure in the downtrodden, seeking a place of freedom. Not all of its founders share the same goal, and some truly do believe in a brighter tomorrow. We must weed out the good and the bad to ensure that those only loyal to our cause get through. Very good. Do we have any sort of event? Because we have a lot to core, I bet, right now. Because this is a lot of territory. Wow. Well, we can go through all this stuff. Everyone opposes this. Empowering the communes? Well, if you want to read about this, go right ahead. I kind of just want to end this episode. There you go. And if you like, oh, well, I guess we'll read it anyway, since it's the same thing. Arms production is always run smoothly in the free territory, with each commune receiving no fewer guns than, need, than they need to defend themselves against bandits and reactionary encroachment. That's not the case according to one of the communes in the General Assembly. However, they claim that their arms supplies come up short in recent months, leaving their militia without sufficient weapons to defend the communities. Granted, there is no evidence of this, but if they have needed them, it must be met. So they say. Cool.
economic activity. I think we've already read this, so if you'd like to read this again, please go right ahead. So be it. All right, three supporting, taking control of ourselves. If you'd like to read about this, go right ahead once more. That's like the third time it's happened, so be it. And we can't integrate. I'd love to do that stuff there, but that's okay. And it looks like we're not getting any sort of event, which is totally, totally okay. Let's grab some of this. So if that's the case, we shall end it here, my friends. Uh, I would like to form or convince customers we don't need that form this part, but we're going to wait. I want to get to the focus tree first, which we'll do in the next episode. But if you enjoyed this episode, leave a like. Please do leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow as we shall consolidate our rule and spread anarchism throughout the lands. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.